Welcome back. I'm here with more Endless Space 2, a game which I love. Last time, I was kind of greedily eyeing over here. So I'm going to be sending my uh, ships over there to hopefully get rid of them and then colonize it pretty quickly. I also need to get rid of... There's a pirate right here where that little, like, sonar thing is. Once I kill him, I can then uh, send a ship over here to colonize here. I need to be careful of my blue neighbor, who I have just discovered and want to crush, ideally, but I'm willing to accept other realities. And uh, I think I think that's about it, really. Uh, I'm playing as the He Show. And we're maxed out on honor, which is not something you can say very often. I think I'm going to do another uh, dose of Way of the Obsidian Eagle. Just another one of those little... little Buffs that cost your key. Alright, I have a new hacking operation available. So, I think what I'll do is I'm going to attempt to hack maybe the academy. Might be a little risky, but I'm going to go for it. So if I use an accelerator here, that'll make it so the hack completes faster, so they have less time to kind of trace it back to me. It's the plan, anyway. I've also been considering adding, uh, I guess I can't yet, unless I want to slow down my ship. I, I could add a cloak to my colony ship, which might be might be useful. Cloaking in general is one of those things that's generally pretty good. This time I think I'm going to go with Militarist for my, my party. Scientist has done me really well, but I think, I think it's time to move on. So... The Hisho also have a, a, a one one little flavor of the Hisho is that every election time that happens, their their observance changes. So it's kind of like a like a cultural uh, thing that they do. So in this case, it changes uh, a building I can make, which allows me to sacrifice a population to generate uh, plus fifty percent dust for five turns. So those, uh, I believe, tend to tend to change. All right. So I, now that my uh, militarist party is in control, my hero, who is, my hero, is actually a militarist guy. Like you can see there on the on the left, a little red bit, militarists. So when it's in control, he's actually the the leader of that party. Right now, that it's not going to really do much, but you can actually get skills that are like, if they're a leader of the party, you get blah blah blah, and you get this, you get that. So it's pretty cool. So this replaced my, one of my laws with Jingoist Joy Bill, which is uh, extra defense plus 10% bonus key gains after a space battle per empires at war, plus 10% bonus key gains after a ground battles per empires at war, and a free war declaration. So it's just like you can just straight up just attack people, and you uh, the more people you're fighting at once, the more uh, honor you get. So if you want to be crazy balls to the wall, you could uh, go to war with everyone at once, always. Also, the pirates have grown back. I'm, uh, I'm a little offended by that, actually. <laughs> oh, that's so frustrating. Everything is going so well. Alright, I have a new, uh, another scout here. Bump him up. Now he's an extra probe. I'm gonna send him over to, um, I almost called it Vicarious, but I'm not sure if that's right. V uh, I think it's... Vicarus? Check that out. Now I have my brood ship still. That's so annoying. I wanted to, you know, maybe I'll, I'll send him up here. And I'll try to go off the track there. I think he might be able to catch up in time. All right. All right. Now I have the access to wormholes. I can uh, reduce simple anomalies. Those are the anomalies that are like gray. Those are the ones that are usually kind of mixed. Uh, I can do a thing that I can do a planetary specialization that increases my food. 
And I get an extra hacking operation now. So there is a wormhole right here. Okay, we got him. Right, how are we doing on manpower on these? Okay, so they are, they are still gaining per turn. If that's the case, I'm going to send both of these fleets over here. I'm going to make a couple of new scouts, I think. This planet's all maxed out. I really need to look up... Um, Maybe they need to colonize Arctic and stuff, too. I want to keep my capital... Keep keep growing it, you know? We'll do Arctic, Snow. And then I really got to push into military, I think. Or maybe economy. So the Behemoth is finished. So next turn I'll be able to put out a new probe. I'm going to go with the uh, Forgotten Science, I think. Excellent. I've built a wonder. So wonders are unique in that only one person in the entire galaxy can build them. Oh, that guy is colonized there too? He's cruising for a bruising. I think I'm just going to have to go turbo war mode on him. Alright, let's fly down here. The Hive cares a little for the interests of other races. Talk. So I found the Cravers. Cravers are real nasty. I'm gonna have to retreat and hope for the best. Cravers are actually really fun to play. Their whole thing is that... Um, they eat the planets they have colonized. And while they're eating it, they get way more out of it. But, as a consequence, eventually the planets run out of, you know, material or whatever, and they start getting diminishing returns on it. So pretty much to do well as the Cravers, you have to be constantly expanding. If you aren't, you'll just kind of stagnate and die. Uh, they also cannot be at peace with people, so you can see where that's going. Gotta keep expanding, can't make peace, kill everyone, eat everything. I'm just like, let's just make all the things. I can't, uh... I can't let the Sofans get away with their sin. Okay. Um... On this one, I'm gonna do Refuse Trial, I think. I'm, I'm worried about creating a political crisis. I don't really care about pacifists, because the Hisho in general don't really lean that way. It's not really their thing. Okay, so you'll see here. This is sort of um, their reaction to political effects. So they have some political traits, but really the, the important part is... Um, you can see that there's all these different kind of political parties, but... This ring here has the center, and then it has these on the outside. Those are sort of, the outside part is basically what happens when any one of the uh, inner ones is triggered. So, for example, when uh, a religious event or stimulus happens that would make people religious, it splits it between making them um, militarist and religious. So you can try to get religion, but half of them are going to end up becoming militarist. Um, whereas the, the stimulus that would turn people pacifists only works on half the people. So basically, they have a hard time becoming pacifist. The others are, are they're kind of like whatever wrong, but that's the important gist. But different populations have different sort of um, leanings on things. I think I'm probably ready for a law, law. I'm making a pretty good amount of influence now, so I think I could probably get away with it. 
I think I'm going to go with lower fleet costs. This one's just going to cost me a measly 19. Oh, sorry, and a measly 28 per turn. I'm, I'm making 94. So we'll go ahead and do that. I was thinking about maybe doing Hatched at Home. This one has the consequence of lowering your, your honor per colonized system. But increases everything by 25%. So, like, I could probably just deal with that for a little bit. I think I will. You can cancel laws after a couple turns, so... I do also need to check out that direction. I think that's next. I think these guys are still under construction. Yep. Yeah. I've unlocked a new hero. I should probably... I, I guess probably religious is probably going to be the good one here. There is also the potential for an administrator, but let me see what the what his traits are like. Yep. Okay. So extra extra food and production on the system, money, behemoth. Oh, behemoth stuff. That's pretty good. But a lot of this is like ship related stuff. So maybe I will go with this guy. He's also a militarist, but I don't think I need to worry about him too much. Let's see, he gives influence. Um, industry, if it's a sterile system. Strategic resources. And production later on. I think I'll go with him. I'm going to put him on my capital. I think I will start with the optimal operations expert. Everyone has access to these, I believe. Actually, I think that's what it actually says. Yeah, this branch contains skills that all heroes can access. These are kind of like the generic ones. So this one's just like a little bit of food, a little bit of production per person. So it's pretty good on bigger systems, but not that great on small ones. Uh, I think I'm going to save the inhabitants. Good stuff. Alright, my two scouts are ready. Want that one to go that way. I want this one to go this way. I have my new fleet here, which is good for uh, attacking. Move my hero onto it. Oh yeah, I also want to modify my hero. Uh, so heroes have their own ships, right? So you can do... I want to give him this. This uh, increases the entire fleet's movement points. I'm going to give him just like this for speed. Let's see. Let's give him uh, some of these. I'll give him also a sync laser just for fun. And a railgun. Railguns are good because they ignore shields and hull plating. So they, they punch right through. They don't do a ton of damage, but they, they, they do they do the damage, guaranteed. It's their tagline. I'm also going to give him this uh, special plating. It's better than the usual ones. And then I'm going to give him a better shield. And there you go. I should probably maybe also look and see if I can upgrade these. I cannot. Okay, so we're good here. Let me just uh, flatter these guys a little bit. Alright, so this has six movement. Let's fly over, fly over to Gano, and uh, I think I'm gonna have to... I'm gonna fight the Sofan, I think. I'm a little bit worried about it, but... Fire some probes. I found a black hole. There it is. Let's fire some probes around. Fire it that way, and I'm going to have him head down the line. Okay, let's get rid of the seismic activity. 
Then, see, I can't do any of this stuff. I can't colonize any further there. So I'm thinking more ships, really. I should also get the uh, technology that allows me to build behemoths. Behemoth blueprints, that's the one. Okay. I got my academy embassy. Guess I'll build even more ships. I just feel like I'm at a point now where it's like, I need to expand right now. So I'm going to encrypt here, because I'm worried about hacks coming this way. Alright, better curiosities are available. I have some terraforming now, which is pretty cool. I say some, because it, it the terraforming technology kind of comes in uh, in waves. So this is from hacking the academy, which gives you some kind of extra cool uh, abilities here. I think I'm going to go with Guardian. That kind of lets you affect your odds of getting certain, certain types of heroes. I don't think it's like amazing stuff, but it's handy. It's going to take three turns to get rid of that. I don't care about it that much. My, my, my food isn't really that much of a, like, a concern. Okay. How's this colony doing? Is it still growing? It says it's going to take forever. So I'm inclined to believe it's not, not doing so hot. It might wither on the vine next turn. Okay, I can colonize here now. So I think I will. Tell us what you plan. Okay. I'm gonna colonize here, I think. It's the food isn't gonna be as good. Here I am, in the desert. So you get some kind of interesting options here. Um, you can use greener grass to absorb food from your opponent at the cost of some manpower. I'm going to be a lot better at manpower than him. So if I do that, his outpost is dead in three turns and mine's growing up. He might take some countermeasures, but it's at least a good way to slow him down. Next up, let's hop in here. We're going to do another round of preemptive bombing, because that seemed to work pretty well last time. Now that my money's doing well, I might actually upgrade my tanks. I can't afford that, but extra armor health is pretty nice. I think they already have a lot of health anyway, because, you know, armor. Alright, we're going to do another round of preemptive bombing. Next time, we'll finish them off. We got another pirate here. Who cares about that, right? We'll just kind of squash him. This guy is leveled up. Let's go with this. Let's see here. My economy is actually doing really good. So I guess I'll get rid of the metal waters while, while times are good. Over here. Ash, desert, Mediterranean. It's a shame, because I actually would love that Mediterranean, but... Cravers are, are hard to beat for colonizing, if I remember correctly. I think they get a lot of bonuses to it. This is getting near the edge. There might not be anything else really to explore in these directions, but 
Let's go ahead and fire some probes just to make 100% sure. Meanwhile here, we got some new spots to check out. There's some Hyperium there. Voidstone. There's the Low Gravity Anomaly. And some Influence. I'm going to put uh, the Metallic Waters kind of on the back burner. I'm going to build another Brood Ship. I'm feeling a little bit of a, of a rush that I'm just like, I need, to, I need to get through here as fast as I can. Okay, yeah, I'm definitely killing their outpost. For the most part with the Cravers, your biggest defense against them is just defending against them. If you don't let them take any new territory, they will inevitably wither. They seem scary initially, because they are, but if you don't let them win, you don't have to necessarily have to make them lose. They, they tend to run all out pretty quick. Some new curiosities are available. Let's do this. One thing I haven't been paying attention to. Our enterprise requires resources. Okay. Let's blitz the last of this pirate. Good stuff. Oh, we got a lot of money from that. Jeez. Our purpose is to kill. Okay. Well, they were not lying when they said that uh, that he should get bonus resources for for knocking that stuff out. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm gonna make another colony ship as well. I'm just gonna like make as many as I can. I feel like I'm at a point now where it's like either colonize or accept defeat. I think Pisces is next on my list. Let's colonize this desert. Then we're gonna go with the predictive logistics, I suppose. Let me feed these guys more praise. Uh, I can't see much I, sh I should be doing here. I guess I'll build the, the Graviton Shielded Laboratories. Okay, they're going to lose their colony in, in, in a turn. That's good. I actually think it's a lot of fun in this game, kind of fighting over uh, colonies. I get the feeling the Cravers probably haven't discovered technology to do wormholes, unlike the Sophons. I'm gonna do Rest Spies. The other thing was um, an event that let me cheat, you know, lower the cheat cost on elections, but my elections aren't even real, so. Okay, that's, that's their, their capital, Craver capital. This guy's leveled up. Take care of that. Broodship is done. Okay, so that one's headed there. Let's head this new broodship to Pisces. Colonize here. Let's, uh, I guess we'll check out the anomalies here. More void stone. And, uh, deciduous trees. Alright, so at this point, their colony has failed. Good for me. And now I just need to wait for the cost to go down. Do I want to colonize down here as well? Let's see. Oh yeah, it's a medium atoll. That's actually really good. 
Maybe I will. All right, I'll let, I'll let the metallic water finish. I, get, I keep feeling bad that it's like, I can do it. Next up, I think I'll colonize this Arctic. Give my population some, some new places to grow. Account operations waiting to be assigned. Yeah, I hear ya. Might try working my way towards the uh, Craver capital to hack them. That's always a little tough. So it looks like I need to head here. Okay, let's up to our next election. I'm gonna do militarists again. Sun God's Ritual is next, which is... Sacrifice the population to gain plus 50% food. Oh, sorry, 50% food to manpower for five turns. So that's a good way to kind of juice some extra um, manpower. Which I am a little low on, because I keep making ships. System safe has been marked as the target of a pirate contract. That's a little bit rude, don't you think? I probably should send uh, a new fleet over to squash those pirates. System safe has been hacked. Alright, I need to... I'm going to do a defensive program there. Wait, what's better, lockdown or encrypt? Blocks the create backdoor outcome. Pretty good. Removes any detected uh, backdoor. I think I'm going to go with encrypt, because that's the one that actually, like... Actually, maybe both. It keeps happening, so I feel like I need to really lock that one down. I only have so much capacity, so it's always like... I, I try to minimize how much I need at any time. Alright, next up is... I just got a new... research-related research. I could colonize ice now. I have some extra uh, science buildings, some hacking operations. Our purpose is to kill. I think those guys' purpose is to kill. It's a little bit unclear, though. So we got some uh, industrial zone. We'll put that there. I could try terraforming it. I could terraform it to a uh, an arid planet. Which would make it... Actually, I guess it doesn't matter too much. Normally I do that for the uh, loyalty. Or, yeah, for the happiness. But happiness isn't as much of a thing for these guys. It's more about... Your obedience. Which comes from a separate thing. So I don't know, I'll think about that. You get more extreme resources from... Crazier planets, but... You can fit more people... On other planets. So, like, you'll see, like, the Savannah. It's got a uh, little maximum population down there is, is plus two, the bottom left. So you can fit more people. So it's generally pretty cool. I'll probably hold off, though, for now. Next up uh, here... Gosh, I don't know. Maybe I'll go with the uh, science stuff. Get that going. I think I'll do the same here. There we go. Got a nice big thick fleet now. Alright, I need the academy to stop raiding me for some reason. He might get mad about that. Oh, he's trying to colonize. Get out of here. Will not yeah, it generates decided. reparations. Yeah, yeah. You are hard to tolerate. <laughs> so whenever you do an action like that, he basically chalks it up and give, there's basically a fee that he, has, he, he gives you. If you don't pay it, he tries to kill you. Um, but if that, that means if you're rich enough, you can do things like you can just like take some of his land and then just pay him off after. This guy is leveled up. Farming logistics is pretty good. But I think I'm going with influence. I should check and see if I uh, unlocked any new cool laws. 
I'm also, I think I'm going to abolish this law, as much as I love it. Yeah, I'm going to wait on that. Alright, this is uh, almost done. I want to research some new ships. So, I want these two. It's also tempting to maybe upgrade my existing ones, but I'm going to hold off for the moment. Then I'm going to research some uh, economical stuff. There you go. There's the next of uh, my forever. <laughs> Alright, that is probably a good place to end it for this one. We've done actually a lot this one, this episode. A lot of colonizing. Um, speaking of which, let me just go ahead and pop one here. Arctic is going to be the better choice. Love the art. So that's happening. Um, done a lot of exploring, found my neighbors. Possibly going to start a fight over here. Won a colonial battle here. Got a lot done. So next time, I think I'm going to gear up for war even more and probably fight... My assumption is I'm going to fight the Sofons because they are probably the most vulnerable to my fighting. Whereas the Cravers, if I just kind of dig in a little bit, I don't I don't think there's much they can do about me. One thing I want to do before I, uh, before I end this and forget is I'm going to send a brood ship down here and hopefully... Oh no, I don't have to worry about remembering because it's a wormhole. Okay, so let me just colonize this atoll. How beautiful. Kind of reminds me of Mario Odyssey, actually, come to think of it. Okay. So, uh, thanks for watching, and take care.